Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me. Jay Todd here at the ICE conference in London. I've caught up with Casey Clark from the American Gaming Association, a couple of yanks across the pond here at this fantastic event. And we were going to be talking about the Responsible Gambling Collaborative. And with what's going on in the United Kingdom right now with Responsible Gaming, I thought it was important that uh, you know, we, we get this topic out there in front of people uh, because at the rate the American market is starting to grow and ex explode, especially with sports betting, this is going to be something we're going to be looking at in the future, without a doubt here in America. So, you got this collaborative group. Who's in the group and what's the goal? Are they just, they kind of coming together as a, as a you know, uh, community of, ga of gamers and looking at this and what's going on over here and over there? I appreciate you having me. I think the opportunity is really to, for the first time ever, American interests are aligned on responsible gaming. And you have academics and nonprofits and leading industry groups like the American Gaming Association. We're all coming together to really identify what works on responsible gambling. So how are we going to put the right level of research together to identify scientifically what might work in a casino for, for patrons to make sure that they're gambling responsibly. So it's it tackles it both from the preventative responsible gaming standpoint as well as the treatment side on problem gambling. So we're trying to work collaboratively to really find the right solutions and it's really starting to work. La earlier this year we released our effectiveness principles which is the first kind of output of that group's work uh, and I look forward to what we're going to be able to do with the head. Okay, you had, you had mentioned in there casino gaming and you know just before I got on the plane to come to this event. I saw a news story about this new feature where it's it's completely cashless. You can actually have, uh, while you're sitting at a poker table or a slot machine, uh, swipe a card. Sometimes it's your player's card. Sometimes maybe it's your ATM card. Maybe they're tied together. And it's completely cashless. They just deliver the chips or the credits or whatever right to where you're sitting. Now, with some of the headlines out of Britain, uh, this kind of, you know, concerned me because I thought perhaps we're giving industry opponents some ammunition to come back and say that's not responsible. Sure, I, th I think that there's an appropriate level of awareness of what that would look like from a responsible gaming standpoint. And as you know, our industry has been committed to this for decades, both in the U.S. and abroad. I think there's a lot of lessons for us to learn from what's happening, both positively for more mature markets like the U.K., but also the negative consequences of getting it wrong. So on sports betting, we're really committed to getting it right and looking at how we can put the right kind of policies in place to enable this opportunity to exist, but not just force it into market with bad policies that are going to affect consumers negatively or the experience of a fan uh, negatively. So on cashless payments, I think the opportunity is really, there's a real opportunity to have better insight into responsible gaming activity, to set limits on money, to track money coming in from a money laundering standpoint. And so really digital payments provide a really a modernized approach to how we can better the industry from key, key areas where we're evaluated by regulators and the public alike. But I think it's, it, it's a, it's a, work in progress. That's why you're seeing some of these new technologies being tested in casino markets. Um, there's some in Las Vegas, there's some in tribal uh, properties in California, I believe. So there's a lot of opportunity there, uh, and I think you're seeing that come to fold. Okay, so in actuality, did these digital payments being tracked uh, more effectively could actually be a positive thing for problem gamblers who maybe put themselves on a, uh, a list where they, they you know, don't want to be contact or they really should because I know there's the self-exclusion stuff yes. that goes on in the UK. So this could actually uh, benefit programs like that. It could, it could bring another layer of sophistication to how we're making sure, monitoring that kind of activity for people who self-exclude or even from a property standpoint, if they're monitoring the activity of a person that it's easier to do without cash, right, in terms of where that money's coming from and how it's being spent and with, at what rate. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity on knowing your customer, on AML practices, on responsible gaming, on limit setting and time limit setting and, and all of the sorts of things that you can do by tracking digital payments more effectively than someone who walks in with a pocket full of cash. That's a very good point. Okay, so if uh, someone's watching, perhaps they're a player, uh, an affiliate, or, or perhaps they uh, are involved in the industry in some other aspect, they want more information on the Responsible Gambling Initiative. Is there a place they can go to find out about what you're doing? You bet. There's a lot of information on our site, AmericanGaming.org, and then there, you can check from there into the Responsible Gaming Gambling Collaborative to get more information there, too. Excellent. Good stuff. Thank you so much for meeting me and coming on.